all began long ago, when the first breath of wind blew across the sands. Oceans rose to meet this wind. Storms brewed. Waves marched towards the shore. It was the beginning. Along came man, along came woman. As man met woman, wind met water. The two longed for each other. Then along came surfing, and people went sailing. When these two sports naturally merged, folks would soon call it windsurfing. This is the history of windsurfing as we know it. And these are the legends of wind. Welcome to our journey through the history of windsurfing, one of the most fascinating sports ever created. Told by the legends that rode the wind and waters of yesterday, we tell our tale in four waves. The first wave follows the rise of invention through the sunset of the Windsurfer 1 design era. Wave 2 focuses on the sports revolution of funboard design and the journey into the surf. Our third wave takes the sport through a technological evolution where equipment becomes lighter and maneuvers go off the chart. We end our story with the fourth wave, highlighting the modern wind warriors and youth movements of today. Before each segment, we will introduce the legends we think had the biggest impact on our sport. You know, I'm recognized more in some places than other places. I mean, I can walk around in America all year and probably hardly ever get recognized. And when I do, it's usually a European tourist <laughs> that recognizes me in an airport. Um, and yeah, in some places, it's everywhere you go. You go to Germany, everybody knows who I am. You know, your 80-year-old grandmother would probably know who I am. It's a natural thing for him. He was just so smooth, so dominant, so dynamic. If you follow the trends, a guy would make something, go out and ride it pretty well, and everybody else would just go, I need one of those. And it goes in big circles. Uh, you know, the asymmetrical can opener boards where everybody at Hokipa had to be on one of those or that was it. And that's what guys rode for years at Hokipa. Everywhere else they'd ride a normal board. And then Jason Polakow came in, ripping on a traditional single fin out there. Of the asymmetrical, it's got to be on a narrow symmetrical board. Um, Josh Angulo made the Twinsers, twin fins. In the late 80s, a new playground for the fearless at heart opened up. Further up the north shore of Maui, a place called Domes was discovered, later aptly named Jaws. Uh, yeah, as far as I know, um, I was one of the first people to, to windsurf at Jaws. We're like, oh, we're gonna go up and check out that place, Dome. So we started tacking up. And at that point, it was kind of like playing in the land of the giants, you know? There was nobody on the shore, nobody knew we were up there, and it really felt like we were right on the edge of the earth. 
I think it was in 91, Greg Aguirre and Josh Angulo went up there. And it was, it was obviously much bigger than when Mark and Brett and I went up there. And when I got there, and we anchored 100 yards away from the throat of the thing, suddenly realized how big this wave really was. And there was one wave of Josh where he, I mean, he, he wasn't barreled, but he was close as a windsurfer had ever been getting barreled. And we couldn't believe what we were seeing, and we, we were just frothing. Went out there, had no idea what I was doing, riding a little twin fin with phasers. And The next day after we went, still the same swell, those guys went up, and there were seven of them. If I recall correctly, there were seven guys. They went and they launched right at Jaws off the rocks. Now, to me, that's insanity. 